here we go. Hello, this is CBRT768, and we are back with Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. And last time, we finished our second day of investigation, where we met this man, only known as the Caretaker, who has a very bad memory, but his parrot keeps track of his memories, and we learned more about the DL6 incident because his bird, Polly, said, don't forget about the DL6 incident. And so we told Gumshoe about it, we investigated, he, uh, he let us see the records, and we learned that there were like three people trapped in the elevator, and that's the DL6 incident, where it was Edgeworth, his father, and another man, and people suspect the other man killed him. And we learned that the guy got brain damage because of the lack of oxygen in the elevator, which I suspect is him. Also during the investigation, we proved a lot of heart that there is no Gordy. It turned out it was Larry's flatable samurai, uh, steel samurai doll. So without further ado, let's get this trial underway. It was the night of the 24th, it was after midnight, uh, yep. I was in the restaurant where I, uh, rent boats as usual. Then I heard a bang, yep. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just afloat on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore, and a man walks by to my window. Okay. Hmm. Very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. Objection. Objection. <laughs> there is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge, your verdict now. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Wright. Uh, cross-examine. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. <clears throat> Very well, you may begin. Excuse me, Mr. Von Kalama? Three minutes just passed. I see. Well then, let's take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. <laughs> what the hell was that? He <laughs> just <laughs> roared. All right. It's trying for just for a minute. Oh, yeah. Hold it. Just after midnight, you say? Uh, yep, just around then. Are you sure? Pretty sure, I yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. Objection! I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? Ah. <laughs> Don't glare at me like that. I, uh, I remembered it clearly, I did, I yep. You see, continue. I was in the restaurant where I had a good Hold it! Is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. That's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Wright, exactly what's not good enough? Uh, uh, your honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith? Objection. The prosecution, the prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was not in the shot. Witness, please continue. I heard a bang. And where did the bang seem to come from? From the lake, I dig it. Are you certain? Uh, yep. Good. Continue. Then I looked out the window, I saw a boat. Hold it. Was there someone in the boat? It was very far out there, I couldn't see clearly, but I figured there was two men out there, uh, yep. But you couldn't see them clearly. Uh, yep. Yeah. At the time, that was. At the time? I heard another. Hold it! So you heard two gunshots, total. Uh, yep. Yeah. That's what Lotta said in her testimony yesterday. Just about then, the boat came back and showed me. Man walked to my window. By your window? Uh, yep. Yeah. By my window. Right outside the window of my little shack. And who? 
And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important deal. Please add it to your testimony. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. That man wasn't offended. He was saying I can't believe he's dead. Hold it. Hold it. Are you sure? Uh oh. D Dad! Uh, dead certain, Kate. He said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by, too. Oh my god, I can't believe he would say that! Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him! That Edgeworth boy! Oh. This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. But karma. He lured me into cross-examination. Cross-examining so he could set up me up for all the fall. <laughs> Nick, Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I better act quick, or this trial is going to be over. Say, obviously, I think we need to raise an objection. Objection! Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edward who fired that gun. Dad. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edward's right hand found on the gun? Oh, great. What do you do? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand. Exactly. <laughs> that is easily explainable. He could have wiped his friends after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. Hmm. This judge has lost his thought. What should I do? Raise an objection? Seems like we got no other choice. I mean, we can't stop, can we? I mean, we'll see. Objection! Objection! Your Honor, this witness claims that Ezra said, I can't believe he's dead, but his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie... Objection! Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say it says it is a lie, show us proof. Nick, do we have evidence? No good. There's nothing I can do. Uh, are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. <laughs> Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Yeah. The witness may leave the stack. <laughs> I hopefully we just had to lose. This course is no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need for more evidence, no more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterruption of the facts. What? No! <sighs> this court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edward. Oh, shit. Did I really fail? The accused was surrendered to the court immediately to be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's trial, from today's date. That is all. This court is adjourned. I'll see. Do I get a game to over screen or no? There we go. Wait! Who was who that just now? Oh, wait. Oh, wait! Who was that just now? Me! Huh? What? Yep. L Larry? What are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me, man. I, I was, I was there in the park the night of the murder, man. I, I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But, but today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot! I heard it too! Oh my god, he heard the gunshot! Man, I thought I was gonna fail. Oh, order! Objection! 
What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for a drip. A draw man. One moment, Mr. Von Kopp. So, you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did, man. A gunshot. Like, that night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. A anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Effie a murderer, man. It's, it's just no right, man. I'll testify. I'm like, let me testify, man. Oh, my God. We gotta let him testify. Order. Order. Well, this is the first time something has, has happened like this in my court. Even though I already declared Edward guilty. Sure, go ahead. I'm not quite sure how to process it. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Let's give us one final chance of this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. It could make things even worse. Mr. Edwards was just a claim to guilty, did it? It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overruled, overturned. Hmm. <gasps> Judge? Allow me to speak by opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to present, to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Oh my god, he withdrew it! I didn't even know you could do that! Mr. Von Kopp, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now! What? The court will adjourn for a five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is good. You did it, Larry. You saved us. Woo! December 27, 10.28 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Woo! That was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edward. Huh. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edward. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night. Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Yep. And as I said, that's what we proved was Gordy. All right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edward. Huh? You say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It... it's nothing. Huh? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the mud woman? Oh. Yeah, explain. Uh... When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. So what I can tell, it sounds like he was knocked out, he woke up in a daze, and because he was dizzy, he picked up the gun without thinking. I see! Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let every he has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of hoes, holes, right? Not hoes, holes. That's right, Nick. No ten minute trial this time. We'll milk, milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Everything's on Larry now. <laughs> Great. Oh boy. 
December 27th, 10.35 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. <laughs> ram, 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 ram. Oh. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, please to me, ma'am. Please, Larry, you don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. <laughs> but Carmen didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. Alright, night of the murder. Here we go. That night I was out in a b boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I uh, found it, man. So I quietly flipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock, man. Like then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. I think that's it right there. Why is it two? Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward. There's no way to go but forward. Nick. <laughs> Alright, let me save real quick since we've done so much already. Oops, there we go. Alright. I want to see my evidence. Something about that two gunshot doesn't sound right. She said she heard two gunshots. I feel that's it. Like, shouldn't we have heard two gunshots? Well, I did say it, so. Look down late. So after I heard that single gunshot, specifically single. Yep, I know. I love how I immediately knew it. I, I love that I immediately knew it was two gunshots she heard. Why do you only hear one? Well, wait a second, Larry. What? What? And again, sorry if I skip dialogue, but I mean, if I can see the contradiction, I'm gonna go for it. I only press if I don't see it. You only heard one bang? You're sure? That's what I said, ma'am! But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old manager now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please, ma'am! Huh? You know something's been bothering me, man. I'm a witness, see? Like, I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Uh... Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? Oh... Uh, like, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure, man. Uh? Not sure? H how can you be not sure? Yeah, well, man, I, uh, I might, like, have missed the other gunshot, man. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude, with my headphones, man. What? <laughs> order, order, and stop that booing. But, Mr. Box, you were listening to the radio with your headphones. Yeah, man. Like, I was listening to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal, man? Hmm. Mr. Rankama, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness, nor his shabby testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Well, I'd say you have to continue. If we just stop, then it's over. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Blah! Nothing is more painful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Box, please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your race. Right, leave it to me, ma'am. I wonder if there were any other way out of this, believe me. <laughs> I love Wright. I love doing that voice for Wright when he's like, 
We was like nervous. What Larry heard? It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve, man. That's why, that's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio, see, man. I was listening to it like real booming loud, like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot, man. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too, man. What do you say? You are listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem, man? Like, can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country, man? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe his testimony. Objection! Objection. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DA said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talked between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. But, very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Alright, let's press. Got it! I mean, it's probably at the end. So you turned on the radio. Right! I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know, man. You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve alone, man. I shouldn't have said it. <laughs> Hold it! Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? Objection! This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection to stay. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Watts, how loud was your radio set to that night? Hey, listening to it booming loud. Hold it! Real booming loud? Yeah, you know, ma'am? And you had headphones on? Yeah. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. But I'm sure I heard that gun come up. Hold it! Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. No, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear, man. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know, man. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying. Yeah, this is what we need to press. What was he saying? What did she say? Objection! Mr. Roy, please cease these pointless accusations. Questions. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said to do, said to us? Indeed, Mr. Markov has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. Well, we should care. We have to care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should care. Why? Uh, but, well, how? you know if we don't ask, huh? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please just write to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard, like, the gunshot. When it's almost Christmas. Almost Christmas. Maybe this photo has something to do with it, but let's press it just in case. Hold it! Are you sure? Of course I am! She had, like, this real sexy voice! Huh, maybe Mom Karma was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the most luxurious testimony I've ever heard, but there is one gleaming ray of hope in that. I've got to press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. Alright. I think it's the last... It has to be the last one. I remember exactly what Jesus was saying. Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard a gun trumpet. That seems suspicious, yeah. Because... Because if the photo... Because if this photo was taken at 11.50, and the only... And again, this was set to hear bang, so... No? Oh. 
guys and okay no it has to be some evidence though it has to be here time to have some time on the 24th or 25th could that be it he said he heard a gunshot and it said hey it's almost Christmas no Alright, no, no. Hey, come on. I'll say, I know it's not right if the music doesn't stop. Alright, what is it? No, no, not that. It's almost Christmas. Not that. There are two shots just after midnight on Christmas. Oh, I was about to say after. So it's like, so yeah, okay. So they said two, two gunshots after midnight on Christmas. So it's like, how did he hear the gunshot? Larry, are you after sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude, man. Hey, if you're trying like to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy, man. I mean, look at my face sweating. That's not fair. Uh, is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. E-G-N. Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But that contradicts the two testimonies we have heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor! Oh my god, he's right! Oh. What? What? What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plain, plainly, plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butt's claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? I think he's right. I mean, why would he lie? Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Huh. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Oh, shit. It has to be a photo. It has to be. Why was this photo taken? Yep. Look at this photograph. This is where the photo comes in. Yes! This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lana Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh? Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in that, this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in a response to loud noises. Oh! Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then, where does that leave us? Well, hang on, George. I gotta save, and I gotta let the SD card pull off, so... Alright, be right back. Alright, we're back. Then, where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, 
that night, there were two sets of gunshots with a 25-minute pause between them. Oh my god, a 25-minute pause? I would have never thought of that. But why would this be? Objection. Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There is no proof that the loud noise at 1150 was a gunshot. That looks fine. I'm just checking the quality. The quality on the camera looks bad, sorry. Why? The witness could have sneezed. Sneeze triggering the camera. No. No, it wasn't. Hey, hey! My nose was clear, man! That nightmare clear of like. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright? Oh, God. Sir! What do we got? There's no turning back now! Can you prove that the loud noise at 1150 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence you have it. Can we bring it up now? I keep questioning this. Why was the gun fired three times? This probably won't work. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. Yes, exactly. I've been asking, why has the gun been fired three times? I can't believe we haven't brought this up yet. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Oh my god, really? Oh! Order! Order! Hmm! That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly! If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh-oh, I better think of something quick. Just in case. I'm not taking a chance. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. I have it! I have it! Huh? I remember the case with the steel samurai! Huh? Yeah, of course I remember! The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case! What do you mean? Maya! Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edward's guilty verdict! I've got a hunch, and I'm going to run with it! Right, I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor? Y yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. Oh my god, it cleared it up? I had no idea! What do you mean, Mr. Wright? <laughs> so, you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edwards himself. Uh-uh. Wrong, Bone Karma. I just want to save this case, sorry. <laughs> I know I do this a lot, but I want to be caught. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edwards who did the shooting. <laughs> Listen, Rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witnesses' photographs. The defendant, Edward, was the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. 
I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 15. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edward could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Hey, you. So, what did you say? Oh. Explain who the two men on the boat are. Let's see. He said it's like the Steel Samurai. So basically, like I've been saying, he was framed. What if I... Could it be Edgeworth and... No, Edgeworth would be out. So Edgeworth is probably lying down in the boat right now, and the guy with the gun's the murderer, and Hammond's the one getting shot. It was the murderer and Robert Hammond. WRONG! Objection! What are you saying? That contradicts what you just told the court. You said that Robert Hammond had been killed 25 minutes before this gunshot. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Oops. Also, might I mention, the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth, has admitted to being on the boat. <laughs> right, Your Honor. Crash and burn. Mr. Wright, your client has already been declared guilty once. I'm going to have to penalize you, but okay. No. Alright, so it's not... Okay, no. I don't know what I was thinking. What if I say this? If it's not, then it's Edgeworth and the murderer. Miles Edgeworth and Robert Hammond. WRONG! Yes, I believe you are mad. That is exactly what I've been telling the court this whole time. You're agreeing with me, and yet, what do you just say? That Robert Hammond has been killed 25 minutes before John a boat. Y yes that's why I said I was just testing you, Von Karma. Mr. Sure. White! Your client is... Okay, that's wrong. Okay. Sick. I am way off. <laughs> I'm not a great lawyer. Don't hire me. Alright, so it's Edgeworth and the murderer. Okay. Of course it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50. He assumed the gent of Miss... The gent of Mi Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. Oh my god. It took him a while to get to that conclusion. What an idiot Mr. Wright is. What? What? Are you serious? Yes. Edward won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edward to the lake. Now, Edward didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. L ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. Murderer's name, right, it's... Probably don't need to say it. We don't know. It can't be Miles Edgeworth. It can't be Lada. Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You, you don't know? Puh! Again, you waste my time. Yeah. I don't know because he never told us. Huh? The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Well, where did he do this? Where? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not a boat? What? What? Well, well then, where did the murder take place? Show the... Show the judge where the murder took place. 
probably here. Look at that. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way, he can meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Objection! Objection! Do you have proof that the boat shop was the, was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. <laughs> that night, he was out on the lake in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns to the boat. Then, just as he started to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop! Oh my god! Mr. Wright! What happened that night on Cord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Y yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. <laughs> His face. Oh! This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then, he got in the boat with Edward and went out into the middle of the lake. I will say, am I being testified? I like this. Then, who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Probably him. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edward on purpose. Wait a minute. Y yes. Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit Edward? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanation is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. The first shot missed. Create a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. In indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first sh gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself leaving the pistol in the boat behind. Hmm! I see! To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm! Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop carriage keepers swam back to his shop. Then, he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body, and he threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor, even though, how would he cover all of his fingerprints? These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Hmm. Huh? Oh, shit. <laughs> Billy! Bring out the witness from before! The boat shop care keep Caretaker, quickly! Oh my god, oh! Oh Jesus. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edwards, a few questions. Mr. Edwards, please take the stand. Okay. Hello. Mr. Edwards, you heard what the defense has said. Yes. Well? Why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so accu accurately. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. 
Your Honor, sir! Bill, we are conducting our trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I, what should I do? Find him quickly! We cannot allow him to get away! My God, he escaped! Damn. Mr. Valcom, your witness has disappeared! A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Nice. That went a bit smoothly. Yeah, there were a couple mistakes I made, especially, like, choosing who was on the boat. But, hey, we did pretty good. December 27, 122 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Yay, thank you, Jenny! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something guess. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I stepped through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our case weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edward. Um, Mr. Edward? Huh? D did you say something? Don't look so pain. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You can try to smile just a little. Relax. Oh, I'm sorry. But I fear it's not over for me yet. Well, what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edward. No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... <sighs> I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edward? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. My God. To be continued. Woo! Yeah, overall, wow, that went pretty smoothly. I was... Because, I mean, the last trial was kind of like, ugh. But this one, this one went pretty smoothly. All right, let's get a preview of our final day of investigation, and we'll call it apart. December 27th, 2 11 p.m., right in co-law offices. What was Mr. Edward talking about? Yeah. A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. Do you really think Mr. Edward killed? I don't believe it. Not Edward. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he never takes someone's life. Never. Nick. Oh. Yo, how very what do you doing, man? Like, what do you think of my performance today, man? I had him swooning in the assholes, huh, my old man? S swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes, I do remember feeling pain. Right on, man. Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right, man? Right, my neck? Uh, uh huh. Uh, uh, me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two? I think you'd do better than that, man. Come on, I said Edward in there, dude. Edgy, man. You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, like, bow before your hero, man. Oh, my God. Great way to start this off. All right, let's save. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, anyway. This has been CB Ultra 768. We'll be back with more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney next time, where we will have our final day of investigation and hopefully gather up enough evidence to save Edward for the final day of trial. So, 
I hope you all enjoyed, and stay tuned for that. Bye! Oh, let me touch your cheers. Hang on. Mmm, your cheers taste so good, Larry.